This um, is one of the eight powers that we learn about in Raj Yoga, the power of discernment. And uh, discernment is intimately connected with conscience. There is a saying that you cannot lie to an honest person because they will discern that what you're saying is not the truth. And how will they discern that is because there is a little message that will come from the conscience and your conscience is just an extraordinary instrument of consciousness that really is an excellent guide. And conscience uh, talks to you about two completely different types of things which you need to discern. Uh, one thing you need to discern is in any situation between yourself and other people, yourself and institutions, organizations, governments, um, whatever it is, uh, you need to know whether something is right or wrong, whether what you're planning to do or say is uh, morally right or wrong, uh, whether the way they are uh, interacting with you is right or wrong, uh, because what you want to do as a spiritual person, uh, you want to have an accumulation of pure karma, that is pure action. And the best way to know what you should do, when you should do it, how you should do it, in what way, um, for how long, all of these decisions depend on your power of discernment. So you need to know if it's right or wrong. But you also need to know if the things that you're dealing with are correct or not. So your conscience also lets you know if, um, say, some information you are being given is correct or not. And we live in uh, the world of fake news and conspiracy theories. And because technology is so user-friendly nowadays, anyone can make anything appear to be true. But there will be a vibration about it that lets you know that it's fake, that it's not true. And so this power of discernment is really becoming more and more essential in daily living because we are indeed surrounded by all sorts of things that make out that they're real and true and authentic and exactly what you need and all of that. Um, but it is not always the case by any means. Another thing that your conscience and your power of discernment are very important for is um, you need to be a good judge of character. We human beings are um, said by Aristotle, a very, very famous saying, man is a social animal. Well, I don't know whether we're animals, we're definitely mammals, but we're human beings. And we live in, in community, in families, in relationship with each other. And human beings don't do so well in isolation. And I know many people during the uh, COVID uh, lockdown and rules and regulations have had to have a lot of time in isolation because of these uh, rules and the circumstances that you find yourself in in that situation. And it's been very hard for people to handle the isolation. But now... Um, 
Who will you choose to trust? Who will you choose to develop a relationship with? Because we have, we all have significant relationships. And so when you meet someone who seems very nice and you decide, okay, maybe I will, um, you know, create a relationship with this one. So you really need your power of discernment to decide if this person is worth your while to put in all that time and energy and commitment that is needed when you make a significant relationship. And so your power of discernment will pick up little signals that will let you know, is this person for real? Is this person honest? Uh, are they as they are presenting themselves or not? And I find it usually takes about a year uh, when you meet someone to really find out uh, all about them. Um, and sometimes it takes much longer than that, but um, very often when you meet people, um, you present the best side of yourself, they present the best side of themselves, but as time goes on, you come to know the other sides of that person. And so then you have to, whenever your power of discernment uh, raises a red flag and you see the person doing something which doesn't uh, fit with how they present themselves, but yet they're showing a side of themselves that maybe you don't want to have in your life. And so at every step, when you encounter these type of um, behaviors or responses or reactions, they, they reveal themselves. And you need to pay attention to these things because um, if it turns out that the person is not what you thought, then you need to back off the relationship. And one of the most difficult choices to make in life is um, who will be your life partner. Um, because not mostly people don't prefer to live alone for the rest of their lives. They generally prefer to have a life partner, have a family and all of this. Or if you don't choose to develop a family, but you want to live in community, then also um, you need to make choices and um, decide uh, who you will live with, because any kind of relationship requires a lot of work and a lot of negotiation, um, because um, you just have to be in harmony, and that means you have to set the rules of the relationship, the boundaries, and you have to see whether this is doable or not doable. So occasionally, uh, you find people who present themselves as really nice people, and then later on you find that there's a dark side of them, they may be abusive, and so before you get into a relationship which is really um, something that you, you've committed to, you need to give it time so that you allow yourself to really discover uh, the person and their family, their friends, and so on. And your power of discernment is your best helper to let you know um, what kind of person this is. And of course, uh, in spiritual practice, we also are thinking about our own selves. And many times people 
imagine themselves to be something that they actually are not. Um, so we need to be really true to ourselves. So every person has their bright side and their dark side, no doubt. And um, when we're doing spiritual practice, there are many elements in that practice. And one aspect of it is personal development, uh, which you can also call character development. And everybody has some or another character defect. Uh, so the power of discernment is really important to find out what are your own character defects. Because if we are not very clear about ourselves, we live under an illusion about ourselves and we become, um, there is this expression, in denial. And um, this is something that happens to people who have serious character defects is that they just don't see it and they are in denial and maybe you are a person who's quite violent and you spread fear in the people around you and they are always having to behave like walking on eggshells as they say and so then you you think well I must be fine if everybody else is, is treating me very um, nicely and politely and so on. But yet you can be in denial. And um, I think one of the important things that happens if a person has really got some serious character defects is sooner or later somebody has enough courage to challenge you and say, hey, uh, this behavior is unacceptable, even at the risk of you blowing up at them, but they will do it. And then you will find yourself face to face with yourself. And um, that may that may feel quite bad. Um, in, in some cases, you may be doing something not quite right and then you get exposed and then you lose face and um, that, that feels really, really bad. So this power of discernment is very important because it helps you to understand that uh, you are quite visible to people. You can't really hide. You can deceive most of the people most of the time but you cannot deceive all the people all the time. Sooner or later, there'll be someone who will make you have to face yourself. So it's so much better if you can discern this in your own self and take care of it yourself. Then you maintain your dignity, your honour, uh, and you also quality relationships because otherwise your character defects will be the reason why your relationships fail and fall apart and then you do end up all by yourself and that is not what people like to have in their lives and like to be. In the professional arena uh, people that you work with, you may be doing work as a volunteer or you may be working for financial remuneration, but your work relationships are also quite important and you need to discern the different games that go on in social situations in the workplace uh, because the workplace is very often a matter of competition, competition for rising up through the organisation, competition for getting favours and uh, other advantages. Um, people are motivated by, they want prestige, they want money, they want power, influence, all of these things. These are very normal desires that people have. 
And in the process of attaining these things, there are a lot of games that people play on each other. So the power of discernment is really important to understand what game is going on. Because you would like to think that everyone is honest, authentic, and for real. And that would be nice. And the world would be a much better place if it were like that. But the reality is it's not like that. In terms of uh, spiritual wisdom, spiritual understanding, of course we know that at the core everyone is a pure, peaceful, powerful, loveful, blissful being of light. But at the same time, especially these days, everyone is under the shadow of different types of character defects. And this plays out in the carrot and the power games and power struggles that occur in, uh, especially in the uh, workplace, in the professional arena. And so people will use different tactics to attain an advantage by bringing someone else down. Um, if you make yourself very expert and excellent and you rise because of your merit, that's another thing. But many people prefer to bring everybody else down so that by comparison, they are in a higher position, but they're not necessarily um, there because of their expertise or their capacity, their capability, their excellence. And um, what drives this kind of behavior is jealousy. So can you tell if someone's jealous of you? And the power of discernment is really very helpful because it lets you understand that the um, what the game is, what game is going on, what people are doing behind your back, um, if you're being defamed, if you're being manipulated, uh, if you're being diminished in the eyes of other people by somebody doing something to bring you down but which they will do in a hidden way. So with your power of discernment, you will pick up the signs and symptoms of this. <coughs> <coughs> and uh, then you will recognize, so this power of recognition also is there, you will recognize what's going on. And one thing that is very important is to be good at defending yourself and your interests if there is someone who is attacking you directly or more especially indirectly, because you have rights. And uh, you may say, okay, well, I'm a spiritual person, and therefore I will not um, put myself up or various things that people think is spiritual, but sometimes they don't get it right. And they end up being someone who everybody walks all over and they think that that's spiritual, but actually it's not. It's kind of stupid, so <laughs> we shouldn't do that. But, you know, sometimes you um, hear all sorts of things which sound good, but they're actually manipulations to prevent you from coming into your own. And uh, all of that needs to be discerned so that you can take care of yourself around it. Another area where I think discernment is extremely important is uh, as to know whether ideas are true or not. Because in the world today, there are many, many different ideas out there. Um, and, and these ideas can take a very, very important place in people's minds and people's motivations. 
Uh, like, for example, nowadays, everyone is very concerned about climate change and there is a debate about it. And there are some people who say there is climate change and it's human driven, therefore we are responsible and therefore we have to do certain things and uh, the description of what is going on in climate change and who's to blame and so on will be presented. And um, that may be the whole story, but it may not be the whole story. And so in order for you to take a position in regard to a debate that's going on, you need to be able to discern what's real and what's right and what is not right. Um, for, for example, in, in climate change, there are many elements which are because of human activity, but one of the elements is overpopulation. It's a big driver of uh, what's happening in the world today. And, you know, you, you can't take responsibility for the quantity of people there are on the earth. And some governments decide that we should um, try to reduce the amount of people that are born, something like this. Um, and some uh, very extreme governments decide that, well, this group of people can be allowed to flourish and that group of people should be given a hard time because one kind of person is better than another kind of person. And all of these things are going on. Sometimes when something is um, like a policy is put into effect uh, based on certain information, but it disregards other information. So when you want to develop your power of discernment over any issue that's going on, um, one thing that's very important is to make sure that you get access to all the information you need. It might be a big uh, global concern like climate change and what to do about it, or it may be something closer to home, like there is some situation in your family and um, some big problem is there, someone is doing something not okay and everybody else is up in arms about it. Well, in order for you to take a position, you cannot rely on just what people say. You have to really find out for yourself. So you need to know how to investigate things. There's also connected with the power of discernment. Uh, you need to know how to, um, how to ask questions to find out what is real, what is not real. And um, for that, you need to discern inside your own self to what extent you are prejudiced. There are many prejudices that people could have. The usual ones that people hear about as um, are you prejudiced uh, according to gender, according to race, according to religion, according to class, according to intelligence level, are you um, prejudiced? Uh, against people with disabilities. Uh, there are many things like this. And um, when there is a problem, usually that problem will be presented to you through a filter of different people's prejudices or preconceptions and assumptions. And when people behave on the basis of that, uh, they normally uh, add to the problem or they 
create a lot of negative karma and they think that they are the best thing there ever was uh, because they think they're right and their attitudes are right, but they may be operating on the basis of a prejudice which is not valid. Um, and this is where um, you need to bring in real spirituality into your thinking. Uh, most people around you and you yourself um, may have been conditioned as you grew up uh, to adopt the prejudices of the society and community and family that you grew up in. And um, you need a very, very good power of discernment to decide whether you want to go along with that or not. Uh, because, you know, why we are talking here is because we want to become truly spiritually motivated people. But nobody starts off like that. We can become like that. And there are many elements to that. And one of them is the element of being a person who judges another person, but not prejudges. Now, we have a statement that everybody uses. They say, don't judge. Um, what they mean by that is don't condemn. So one of the big problems that I find is people really don't use the English language properly. <laughs> they use it very inappropriately. And so sometimes I tell people, you know, have you ever read the dictionary? Do you know the meaning of the words that you're using? Uh, because people are very loose in the way they use words. And uh, there are certain words that become really popular, like don't judge or unconditional love. There's no such thing as unconditional love. And if you do have unconditional love, you can be sure that you don't have any power of discernment. So these catchphrases are very deceptive. And if you have a good power of discernment, you will not go along with it, even if everyone else thinks that's the way to go. Well, people talk about forgiveness. You forgive everything and everyone for everything. Uh, that's not very smart. Um, it's not very practical. It's not very intelligent because you don't understand the meaning of the word forgive. You see. And uh, then on the other side of it, you have revenge, you know. Um, so you have to be very discerning and separate yourself from all the influences as much as you can and decide for yourself what is your position. But a lot of people are unwilling to do that because you... Um, in a certain way, you, you have to isolate yourself from the other people if you don't agree. And um, if you are a very discerning person, the price you pay is that your discernment will actually put you outside the norm because it is the case that most people are not very discerning and they go along with the herd and they don't think about the implications of the position they're taking. So we have to be very particular about what we're doing. So uh, these, um, these ideas that are out there um, may or may not be what you really think. Now, what does spirituality say about these things, being unprejudiced? Um, it's very important to have access to spiritual information if you want to become a person who is truly discerning and who knows 
how to be, say, a good judge of character. If you're not a good judge of character, you will be in trouble. There is no way around that. So to be a good judge of character means you have to be able to evaluate another person. And people don't really like it if they know that you're evaluating them um, because they don't want their weaknesses to be seen. They don't want to be confronted with it. They don't want you to mirror back to them their weaknesses because they have ego problems. But it doesn't mean that you shouldn't do it just because they don't like it. But you can do it in a manner that is not aggressive. Uh, but at the same time, you have to um, fulfill your obligation to yourself not to be foolish or stupid. Uh, you, you need to be intelligent about everything. And so uh, spiritual information will tell you that every human being is a spiritual being and spiritual beings are fundamentally pure, peaceful, powerful, loveful, blissful beings of light. Okay. And um, if you discern that someone is dishonest, then you need to check it in a number of situations, a number of ways. And once you discern that someone is dishonest, then you need to be a bit careful because if you don't discern it, you will be deceived and then you will not like that. Uh, so this discernment is very important. Uh, you are not going to use your prejudices to judge people because prejudice means prejudge. So in, in prejudice is connected with generalizations. And the other day I was talking with someone and they came to know that I live in Germany. And uh, so they said to me, oh, what are the characteristics of Germans? So I said to this person, I said, well, uh, what are the characteristics of the people who live in the flat upstairs where there are six people living? And what are their characteristics? And obviously, each one is completely individual. And so I find myself very often having to make people come face to face with this habit of generalizing about people according to nationality or whatever. And just because it is common for people to judge people on the basis of their national origin, it doesn't mean that's um, uh, very good uh, judgment or very good power of discernment, but it is a generalization. And if you find yourself making a generalization, uh, you need to put a, a red flag up in front of your face and say, hey, self, I am lacking in the power of discernment because, you know, there may be um, similarities, but those similarities are quite superficial and you can't really... Um, understand or evaluate or judge a person on the basis of some superficial similarities that you may have with the community that you are part of. Uh, you know, people will say to me, okay, what are you? Where are you from? And I'm a person who's lived in many different parts of the world who's had exposure to many cultures and different races, different religions. And this has really been helpful because uh, it, it forces you to really see people as individuals and go past the, um, the superficial uh, uh, aspects of a person's identity because a person is really 
not like any other person. And when you want to really understand a person, really know a person, you have to also open up yourself. And um, people, most people open up a little bit and they will show some facets of themselves. Um, some people, they prefer not to show the whole thing because they value their privacy. And you will show your entire self to someone who you decide to have a very close, intimate, and lifelong relationship with. And this exposure of yourself to another person happens slowly because there's always a possibility of discovering something about the other one that you say, no, I, I do not want to pursue this relationship. Or you say, well, I have to work through this. And then it means a person will have to confront their weakness and get past it or the relationship breaks down. And so working on these things is very important. There are some things that cannot be resolved because a person's character is such and they don't want to work through. So then you say, okay, thank you very much. And, um, and you go your way. Um, but it's um, very important to understand one thing, and that is that ultimately everyone is on their own. And this is why it's important to have a relationship with the divine, a relationship with God, because um, you'll always find that people have weaknesses, character defects, and some you can live with, some you can't live with, and that you have to decide for yourself. That also requires a power of discernment. But discerning um, the way in which you can enjoy a relationship with the divine, that requires a very subtle type of perception. Um, you have to discern yourself as a spiritual being. That itself requires subtlety of perception, authenticity and honesty. But, um, you know, to, to recognise God, to um, know that uh, it's possible for you to have a connection with um, the Supreme Being, the Supreme Soul, and that uh, this is an eternal connection and it is um, uh, a side of your life, your spiritual life, that is possible for you to develop. And then if you do that, uh, you have understood something important. You have discerned that there is uh, only that possibility if you want to have an eternal relationship which goes beyond birth and death, um, which goes beyond all the different limitations that people naturally have. So to discern the importance of your personal inner deep uh, spiritual life is a great advantage because sooner or later, People who you're close to, whether you will die or they will die, and then they're not there, or something will happen to them, then they're not there for you. And if we become dependent on something which is not dependable, then we get uh, very, very hurt or disappointed. So something that is really very strengthening in an individual is to have that um, inner life, that relationship, which is beyond the limitations of a uh, human connection. And not everybody can do this. Not everybody can achieve this. But 
but everybody uh, can have this to some extent. And there you have to discern what is meant by faith. And in our spiritual practice, one of the first kinds of faith you must have is faith in yourself and faith in who you are and what you are. So discerning oneself is key to developing one's inner life. And then to discern, for this you require a very fine-tuned discernment, to discern that there actually is a force, a power, a being who is out there, who is not physical, who is not so tangible, but who is discernible. And if you can discern that one and develop a connection, then you have got a support system which is invincible and which will carry you through circumstances and situations where people will not be there for you or they fall away or it's too much for them. Uh, and yet you will be all right because you have cultivated this uh, quiet, deep, subtle, invisible relationship with the divine. And through that, you also can make yourself more spiritually integrated. Uh, you're able to be more honest with yourself. You're able to find the courage to assert yourself and represent yourself. And that if people don't like your truth, you're okay with that. You're not afraid of rejection. You're not afraid of being um, judged. Um, maybe people will understand you wrong. You're not afraid of that. Maybe we'll, people will say bad things about you which are not true. You're not afraid of that because you are not, um, you're ready to be on your own and stand up for yourself because you're not like totally alone. You do have that connection and that support from the one who is known as truth. And you can also develop faith in your connection with that one. And another very important thing to discern, I think, is uh, that all the things that happen, they happen for a reason, and you need to discern what that reason is. And that reason has always got something to do with some sort of a learning experience or that there is an advantage for you in things that happen that do not, on the surface, appear to be advantageous. But when you go a little deeper, you find, yeah, this is really advantageous. And so for that, you need to be really in touch with what we call the drama, the drama of life. Sometimes you could call it destiny. And uh, uh, I just really know that whatever is happening is as it should be. And when you are a very discerning person, it means you're somebody who can see behind the surface of things. You can see into the depth of the real meaning of something. So if you take something at face value, you don't generally get it right. But if you are patient and... Um, open and you look for the gems, uh, the wisdom, the deep uh, message that lies behind an apparently uh, negative situation or scene or circumstance in the drama, uh, then you will find, oh, this is really a very, very good thing. And then you learn to take advantage of it. So that even when everybody else thinks that something's really, really bad, but because you can find out the good in it, the advantage in it, 
then you will say, yeah, this thing is not what it appears to be. Oh, this person is not what they appear to be. You find the secrets that lie buried within, hidden behind the veil of appearances. So a discerning person is not deceived by appearances because you're always looking deeper, you're looking behind. And um, then you have another kind of faith, which is very important faith, that whatever is happening is as it should be. Of course, that's going to save you a lot of time because you don't worry, you don't um, have doubts, you don't uh, make yourself crazy thinking, what if this and what if that? When you are a discerning person, the expression what if doesn't come up in your mind particularly because whatever happens, you're ready for it. And you're ready for the unexpected. You are able to discern trends. And so something which is very unexpected for other people is not particularly surprising for you because you could discern that sooner or later something like this is going to happen. And then that um, does happen. And um, then you have to deal with it. But if you are a discerning person, you are developing a lot of other strengths at the same time. You have good judgment. You're a good judge of character. You're very clear about yourself. You know who you are. You know what you stand for. And you can recognize if there's any manipulation going on, if somebody's jealous of you and they are uh, doing things to... Um, destabilize you, you'll see it, you will flex with it, you will not be destabilized, uh, you will hold to your truth and um, you will be proud of yourself and you will know by the end of your life that you would do it all over again exactly the same way because each step of the way with the power of discernment, you did your best, you did the right thing, you were true to yourself, you kept yourself unbiased, unprejudiced, and, um, yeah, you can say at the end of your life, I, uh, I did my best, I was the best um, within my limitations, everyone has limitations, and that you... You used your life to really grow yourself, develop yourself and become the best you that you could be.